And let's talk a little bit more about heat capacities. So here's some molar heat capacities for solids, right? Remember, we talked about this. Q is equal to mc delta t. You can change back and forth and make this nc delta t just by knowing the molar mass. Okay, remember, this is the number of moles. This is molar mass. You can go back and forth between number of moles and mass using molar mass. All right? So this is a chart that sort of puts these together. We talked about this a little bit in a previous chapter. It's not super important. The main takeaway is that solids have different heat capacities. You can either do them in terms of mass or you can do them in terms of moles, depending on what you want to do. So Q is always equal to some sort of NC delta T. Now for gases, it doesn't just matter the material, it matters what process you go through, which is why we have a different C for a constant volume process than we do for a constant pressure process. Okay, so in an ideal gas, let's say we have these two isotherms. Okay, and what do we know about the temperature along this isotherm? Constant. Okay, and the temperature along the other one, constant. So if you go this way, right, this, the heat here is NCV delta T. This is the molar heat at constant volume. Okay, if you go this way, you have the same temperature change, but you have a different heat transfer, okay? So this would be NCP delta T because this is the constant pressure, okay? So the change in heat, the, ch the heat change in heat is different, right? The heat transfer is different. The change in temperature is the same. And what this says is there's two different ways to go from one temperature to another. Actually, there's more than two, but there's two that we get nice calculations for the heat. Because you could also draw, a, you know, any... Any, point, any line that goes from this isotherm to this isotherm is acceptable as long as you can create it in the physical reality, okay? So those will all have the same change in temperature, but they won't all have the same change in heat, okay? So if you look at this, the temperature change is the same, which means thermal energy should be the same for both, right? So temperature change, same change in temperature, same change in thermal energy, all right? In an isochoric process, your work is zero, all right? In an isobaric process, your work is this, okay? Just the rectangle under the curve. So if, here's some math that you don't need to necessarily know, but if you put all this stuff together, it turns out, okay, since, since you're not changing your thermal energy, you end up with this relationship, right? This CV is equal to CP minus R. What's R? That's that constant, 8.31. Okay? So that means if you know CV, if you know CP, you can just subtract 8.31 and get your CV. Okay? So your molar heat capacity, they're related, which makes sense because they're for the same gas. Okay? So, you can always rewrite this, and you can see, let's say for this monatomic gas, CV is 12.47. What's CP? 20.7. 20 so this plus 8.3 should give you this. Okay, and that's, that should work for all of them. All right? So, the other thing we, want, we do with these heat capacities is we use this ratio, and we call it gamma. It's basically like a squiggly thing, okay? We know because this is this plus 8.3, CP is always greater than CV. So what does that tell us about gamma? If this is always bigger than this, what kind of fraction is this? It's improper, right? Which means this value is always greater than 1. Okay, so gamma is always, always, always greater than 1. And here are some various gammas. For monatomic gas, we have 1.67. For diatomic gas, it's 1.4. And for polyatomic gases, it's messy, but it's around 1.3. Okay, so this actually ends up mattering when we talk about what we're going to talk about next, which is the adiabatic process. Okay, so we know processes where work is zero. That's isochoric. 
We know where change in thermal energy is zero. That's isothermal. The adiabatic process, guess what's zero? Heat. Okay? Okay. Um, as usual, this is a problem I want you to try on your own. So pause, try to do the problem based on what we just covered. And then if you need to follow along, make sure you can um, do the problem without following the solution at some point before you're, you're done with this and move on. Um, okay, so we have three moles of O2 gas. They're at 20 degrees Celsius. Um, we're putting in 600 joules at constant pressure and then removing 600 joules at constant volume. So the relevant information um, is here. So we have three moles. We have 20 degrees Celsius. That's where we start off with 600 joules at constant pressure then 600 joules at constant volume. So um, you'll also see that in this is transferred to the gas, so this is plus 600, and then this is out of the gas, so this is minus 600. We want to know final temperature, that's what we're looking for, and we want to show the process on a PV diagram, and they gave us some constants we might need. Um, so we're going to calculate the temperatures by using the heat formula, and before we even do that, I'm going to draw um, a picture of the PV diagram. So we'll start with the PV diagram. Um, here's P and here is B. So pressure, volume. Uh, the thing we want to start with are some isotherms. So I'm going to make some isotherms. So remember isotherms look like inverse curves. So let's start with one here, these aren't the best drawings, but you know, bear with me. Here, let me try this again. Oh, I can't draw an inverse curve. Okay, there's one, two, and then three. So this would be um, 20 degrees C. And then we're going to find the other two values and then on these isotherms we start at 20 degrees and at pressure 1 and volume 1. So let's just draw that here. So we'll say this is P1, V1, and then we know we're going to have a process that is um, constant pressure, so that's this one, and then constant volume so that's this one. So this is what our process is going to look like. This is step one, right? This should be a straight line. This is step two, um, and this is step three. So we have three states that we're gonna deal with. Um, for the constant pressure, we can start with, so we're, we're calculating uh, Qs. So we'll start with constant pressure. And that's going to be from 1 to 2. So Q1 to 2 is going to be, um, and Cp for constant pressure, delta T. And the thing we're trying to find here is temperature. Um, so we know uh, that Q1 to 2 is equal to plus 600 joules. We know that. Um, N is 3, and we know uh, Cp that's given, that's going to be 29.2 joules per mole Kelvin, um, and we know our T initial is 20 degrees Celsius. And since this is a different in temperature, difference in temperature, remember the difference in Kelvin and the difference in Celsius are the same, so we don't need to convert the temperature necessarily, um, and we can get our answer in Celsius. So we write this out. Um, we solve for delta T is equal to Q1 to 2 over NCP. 
Remember, this is T final minus T initial. Um, and so that's going to be K, uh, sorry. So T final is equal to Q one to two over NCP, this whole thing plus T initial. So we plug in our numbers. That's going to be 600 joules divided by three moles um, times 29.2 joules per mole Kelvin plus 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, we have some things that cancel, so the joules cancel, the moles cancel, and we should get 1 over 1 over Kelvin, but remember this is a difference. So um, this should give us, sorry, Delta T, this whole thing, delta T, should give us 6.8, and that adds to 20. So we end up writing um, 6.8 Kelvin, well, sorry, Celsius, plus 20. So we end up with 26.8 degrees Celsius. Now that would be... would be this curve right here. So that's 28.6 degrees Celsius. Um, we can color that in so it matches. And that's our first part of the problem. And move this up so we have more space and make it a little smaller. So this is our constant pressure process, which we'll make green. So constant pressure, constant pressure, 600 joules, all of that. Okay, um, and that's, we start with this too. Next one is constant volume, which we could also call isochoric. That would be from 2 to 3. Um, and we know that Q from 2 to 3 is a constant volume, so that's NCV delta T. All right. Um, once again, we want to find delta T. So delta T is Q 2 to 3 over NCV, which ends up being negative 600 joules because remember we're saying that um, that we're removing the heat the 600 joules this time um, divided by three moles and 20.9 joules per mole Kelvin so that's going to give us um, negative 9.5 degrees Celsius knowing that uh, T3 is equal to T2, right? Um, where plus delta T in this case, that's going to be 26.8 degrees Celsius minus 9.5 degrees Celsius. So that's going to give us 17.3 degrees Celsius which is good because we can see that we're going to end up on a lower isotherm. So um, if we look at this, uh, let's do this in pink. So here's our constant volume process. So this is 600 joules. Remember, it's negative. Um, constant volume. And we want to know the final temperature. Here's our final temperature. And you can say this is this line, and that's going to be 17.3 degrees C. That's our final answer. And 
We can see this on the PV diagram as well. So um, constant pressure, constant volume, you can see the three isotherms and we could also label the graph if we wanted to. Um, remember the pressure should be, um, actually we don't need to label the, the graph because we don't know what the pressure is, we just know the moles. But we could say this is V1 and this is V2 and this is P1 and this is P3. Okay. Remember, change in thermal energy is always this formula, okay? NCV delta T. If you ever want to calculate change in thermal energy, you can just plug this in, all right? It doesn't have to be, I know this, you know this is for a constant volume process. That's only if you're calculating heat. If you're calculating thermal energy, this is always, always true.